and we welcome those of you who have been watching Big Ten Hockey. We're actually inside Maturi Pavilion, a former hockey institution and arena on the campus of the University of Minnesota. Volleyball is the sport tonight, however. Number seven, Wisconsin versus number five, Minnesota. Both teams are 13-1 and one in Big Ten play and tied for first. And unsurprisingly, we have a neck-and-neck -neck first set. It was a big block right there against Mayabe. She saw four hands in front of her, and those hands got a hold of that ball and put it straight down back on Minnesota's side. Chris Fosters and Laura Bush, the former Minnesota assistant coach, with you from the pad. It is packed tonight. Long set over to Loberg, and Alexis Hart was all over it for Minnesota. Miyabe. And this is the first rally that Laura was looking for. Loberg with a big time kill, and McGraw with a sensational save. Back it comes to Hart. Off hands, still loose, and a point for Wisconsin. A lot of nice, really first contacts there on defense by both the Libros that we saw. You know, Cece McGraw on the Minnesota side, Tiffany Clark on the Wisconsin side. But those high hands off the block that Loberg hit to end that in that rally is going to work a lot tonight against Minnesota. Four nothing run for Wisconsin. Delonga picks up the senior hearts, and that's off some fingers. Point for Minnesota. But what works for Wisconsin is also going to work for Minnesota. When a hitter can go up, get her feet to the ball, reach high, swing high, high off the hands, tough to recover when that ball flips back behind the backcourt defense. Well, Alexis Hart is a senior. Minnesota fans have known about her for a long time, but she is red hot right now. 84 kills, 3.5 kills per set in her last six. Loberg fishes it out from by the Wisconsin bench. On the free ball, here comes Minnesota. Right back to Hart. Terminal once again. And that's a tough ball to block. I mean, Danielle Hart, I think, got hung up a little bit in the middle. It was a perfect pass to DeLonga. Got hung up with Taylor Morgan across the net from her. And uh, Alexis Hart had a lot of space to hit into and took advantage of it. Uh, Truman High School in Kansas City. And Reagan Pittman serving now for Minnesota is also a native of Kansas City. Greater Kansas City. That's down for a Wisconsin point. Hugh McCutcheon is the head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers, and you know him very well. You were the interim coach here at Minnesota, Laura, as Hugh finished up his Olympics coaching tenure. And what a program he not only inherited, but has continued to build upon here in the Twin Cities. Well, he's definitely been a great transition from Mike Hebert into what the new phase of Minnesota volleyball is and putting his brand of volleyball not only at the university, but I think across the state. McGraw with the dig back row. DeLonga with the set. Miyabe too long. Minnesota thought there was a touch. And it's a point for Minnesota. So here comes Steph Samity back on the floor as we take a look at that replay. Now. It's a high flat swing by Mayabi, and I think, you know, as the Wisconsin staff talked to the Wisconsin players about whether they touched or not, Danielle Hart did shake her head yes and said, yeah, I touched it. Not worth the challenge. Some honesty. Tiffany Clark with a rainbow right to her counterpart, the libero Susan McGraw. Samity fresh off the bench, no rust whatsoever. And for Kelly Sheffield, it's been fun to watch his teams battle Hugh McCutcheon's teams to the best in the Big Ten. They came into the conference at approximately the same time, give or take a year. And this is a Wisconsin team that cruised in Madison against Minnesota and swept the Golden Gophers in straight sets. But right now, Minnesota has flipped the script here in the opening set at Maturi with a 5-1 run. That was a really tough serve by McMenamin. It's a two-person serve-receive pattern that Wisconsin likes to use right now. A lot of space for those two players to have to take up and manage. McMenamin got the best of it. Well, there is Danielle Hart in the middle for Wisconsin, a player who has really turned the corner in Big Ten play. Well, she, you know, when you look at her, she looks a lot like Retke. I mean, the dark hair, the size, the quickness, but she has really improved her game. And Kelly Sheffield mentioned that in our call earlier this week that, you know, Earlier in the year, attackers were hitting, you know, 33% against her. As the year has, as this season has gone on, they're hitting about 14% against her. Really improved her blocking game. Again, a bit of a dispute as to who wins that point. It is a point for Minnesota. Wisconsin, Smalley Haggerty thought that was off a touch by the Golden Gophers. There's a 
Remember, each coach gets three challenges to use. And it looks like Kelly Sheffield is going to use one of his three. It is early, but it's a big point. And when you're up there as a hitter, you can, you know, you obviously have a really good feel for what's happening with the ball that you're attacking. But you can hear the sounds. You can also hear the reactions of the players. And you take that into account when they're coming down and saying they got touched. A touch. I don't think a lot of players right now at the challenge system want to waste a challenge just by begging for a call. It was called long and a point for Minnesota. It's Wisconsin challenging this. I'm trying to look off the hands of Taylor Morgan as I think that's who it would touch if it did touch anybody. Taylor Morgan, number 12, Steph Samity, number 10 in the area. Her outside left hand. It doesn't look like the ball changed spin, does it? Do no. You see it? Which and I don't see your fingers go back either. Definitely a telltale sign. Well, unless the officials see something different from all the camera angles that they have. And they do have a few more than we do. They definitely do. But right there. I don't see a touch based on. And remember, in challenges, you have to have indisputable video evidence to overturn the call in play. We should have a resolution pretty soon as the word is passed along the scorer's table. And the point stays with Minnesota. 11-9 Golden Gophers in the first set. Wisconsin has two challenges remaining. Talked to Kelly Sheffield at serve and pass this morning. And it's an absolute grind of a season Big Ten play as Dana Recchi wins the point for Wisconsin. There are no buys in the college volleyball season. Badgers in particular with a very tough schedule down the stretch. They're in the midst of a six out of seven game stretch on the road. Right now they play Minnesota, Nebraska, and Penn State, all top ten teams, to close out the final two weeks of the regular season. Pushed up by Tiffany Clark to libero. Brecky. Great dig by Kill Kelly for Minnesota. Sydney Hilly, the setter, right by the pin. McMenamin pops it up, and Rollins got it over. Here's Haggerty. Blocked and down for a Wisconsin point. Nice patience by both teams during that rally. They took some nice swings, but they didn't take any risky swings, kept it in play until the opportunity came. Then Haggerty to get a hold of it, took advantage of a block that wasn't fully pressed over that net. There are a lot of players in red on the floor tonight who have ties to the maroon and gold. Izzy Ashburn grew up in nearby Dayton, Minnesota. She's the server for Wisconsin. That's punched around, and Clark on the Hail Mary could not get it over. That was a really nice hustle play right there. And if that ball would have gone over on that third contact, I think that really would have increased the momentum to go to the Wisconsin side right now. Here comes CeCe McGraw. Recky with a thunder strike that was absorbed by Kill Kelly, and there's nothing a lot of teams in the country have been able to do about that. Well, that's just a tough ball to handle, and that's a missile coming at you right there. I mean, she's way above the net. She's got a lot of space to hit into, and it's, you know, that's come with a lot of speed, a lot of heat right there, and it's just, just got to manage it to get up, and it got the best of Kill Kelly. Samity. Hilly with the dump over, and Minnesota was caught unaware. Well, in a player defense, you can get a little bit into a rhythm of thinking that, you know, forgetting either that the setter's front row or getting into a rhythm. I'm used to having Recky hit down the line at me. And a good spot by Hilly to put it over on the second contact for that quick kill. There's a service error for Molly Haggerty as she checks out. And M.E. Dodge, the senior from East Troy, Wisconsin, checks back in for the Badgers. 
And this is a rotation that Minnesota does not have a true setter on the floor right now. So be, if the rally occurs, it'll be interesting to see who takes that second contact. And the second contact is taken by Samity this time over to Rollins. Blocked by Recky and Hilly. A devastating block combo for Wisconsin. But that time, it got over but was wide and a point for the Badgers. Rollins with a crafty move. She had the right idea but just couldn't tuck it inside. It's just a little too fine of the line right there. Hard to believe that Dana Reckley did not start playing competitive volleyball until she was 15. Long serve there gives the ball back to Minnesota, but Reckley is now playing for the U.S. national team as she did over the summer, helped the Americans secure a berth. Talk to us. Had a great game on our hands between Wisconsin and Minnesota. Believe it or not, only three errors through the first 29 points between these two teams, Alexis Hart has been pretty darn good in the first half, first set so far. Really nice play by Minnesota. Good first contact. DeLonga moves that ball out right. Just a nice spot for Alexis Hart to stream it down the line and overpower Hilly on the right side. Already three kills for Hart. Here comes Reagan Pittman. Right to Emmy Dodge. Hilly in the middle. Hart finds a soft spot. Danielle Hart for Wisconsin. Well, I would have to think that the Wisconsin staff has drawn that up on that this is a space and where you can get a kill right there. No one's up covering that short tip behind the block. DeLong is still going backwards as the ball's getting taken over and able to take the ball to the floor. And a quick correction, that was actually Manny Dorello with the kill for Wisconsin. Off the block. Hilly, back to Dwello again, and it's popped up out of the back row by Rollins over the heart. Knocked down that time by Danielle Hart. Well, that's a really fun play right there. That, that, that dig comes up, really good, really good effort right here. Danielle Hart transitions off from that block into an attack, into that space, that gap. Gets a nice quick kill for Wisconsin. Timeout, Minnesota. Two-point game here in the first set. That is Hugh McCutcheon and company talk things over in the Minnesota huddle. We'll step aside and be back from the Missouri Pavilion on the Big Ten Network. The proverbial fresh coat of paint. Outstanding crowd as well. Can't beat this for a Big Ten or college volleyball atmosphere. Well, and if you come in here in August when it's really humid outside, they now have air conditioning, which I'm sure everyone appreciates. Everyone appreciates that. Yeah, Alexis Hart, number 19 from Minnesota, said that he doesn't have to wear three shirts of practice anymore now that there's air conditioning in this place. Back to work we go. There's Molly Haggerty. He's had somewhat of a quiet first set. That's just her third attack. And the rally plays on. Taylor Morgan calls for it. And on the free ball, Wisconsin dials up Madison Twello, and that's out of play. Well, that free ball was just going to set Wisconsin up to have just their own the offense right there. So they're in system, perfect free ball pass. Duella hits it, hits it high off the hands and able to beat the defense in Minnesota. And to the point of how close this first set has been, this is the largest lead of the first set for either team. And now it's right back down to two as Minnesota gets side out. She's been really good at managing her shot. She hasn't seen a lot of attempts. We talked about that during the break. But here, you know, the defense for Minnesota read where that ball was really well, able to clamp it down, and Haggerty still went up and I think hit a little bit low, hit a little bit too hard, and tried to bust it through the hands of the block, and it just didn't work. Yabe is from Osaka, Japan. Started her college career at Southern Idaho, a junior college. And because of the fluidity of Minnesota's lineup this season, due in large part to the setter situation, they haven't had consistent stability at the setter position because of injury. Miabe has been, and she's not a setter, but she has still capitalized on increased playing time. And Minnesota has found out a lot about its depth over the course of this season. Hart is blocked, but muscles that one through for a Minnesota point. Really good first contact by Minnesota. And that short set over there just disrupted the block of Wisconsin enough for Alexis Hart to find some space and get the ball to the floor. 
kill Kelly with the serve. Hilly, the setter, in the middle finds Retke. That's such a beautiful ball. There's almost no elevation on it. It's so hard to read for a defense. Well, I like when Retke takes off a one foot in front of the setter. You don't see that very often. Um, I would imagine that Minnesota doesn't practice against it. And then she's able to hit it either the left side of the court or the right side of the court. It's tough to read for the block, and it's definitely very tough to read for the backcourt defense. Hilly and Redke are both juniors. They played a lot of volleyball together, and they will continue to do so for Wisconsin. This time it goes to Haggerty. And that's a point for the Badgers. It's a good use of Molly Haggerty using the hands of the block and taking advantage of that right there. Great. Good first contact. Hilly makes a nice set, puts Haggerty in a nice position. And instead of Haggerty hitting as hard as she possibly can, takes a little bit off and catches the block just a little bit weak as it's coming down. Wisconsin. And that's a point for Minnesota. Rollins has had a awfully good first set for Minnesota. You know, I have to admit, watching that from here, that ball looked like it was going to be out, but it had a lot of space back there in the deep corner on Wisconsin's side. Smart swing by Adonna Rollins. Give her four kills in the first set as McGraw puts it in play. Difficult serve, Lauren Barnes, the former gopher, is barely able to control it, and that point was doomed from the start. A lethal serve by the sophomore from Prior Lake, CeCe McGraw. Recky, too much for Minnesota to handle. That's a good pass by Lauren Barnes. After getting ace prior to that, you knew the ball was probably going to be served right on her again, held her own. Able to get Redke the ball for a quick kill for Wisconsin. Here's Haggerty with the serve. McMenamin with the set to Samity. Clark lunges at it, and it's saved by Wisconsin. Here comes a free ball. McMenamin picks out Samity again. Great dig in the back row by Haggerty. Redke with the push. Rollins blocked by Hilly on the pin. One more time. Change up, and Wisconsin is there. How did Recky get that one through? Looked like she had almost no platform there, and she dropped it down the line. But a point for Minnesota. I think that ball hit off the antenna. There was a little bit of traffic up there. It was a good tip by Donna Rollins, I believe, had it. And Ashburn came up to get the ball and created traffic. Um, that it was hard for Reck to get to feet, her feet to the ball to hit that slide well. A great point for both teams as it's Wisconsin's turn to call a timeout. Obviously, winning the first set is crucial, but it feels like it's extra important in a match like this, and you can see that based on how the teams have been playing out points like this. Well, this is the kind of rally that we were talking about earlier today that we thought this match might show a lot of. I mean, a lot of just one-arm stabs. You know, bodies just flying everywhere. A really good pass, and then some really good defense still, and a hard-driven ball. Haggerty lays it out. Smart tip by Recky, just a little bit out of rhythm. And then Adonna Rollins takes a good swing. Another stab by Samity. I mean, this is just... And this is the play that causes some traffic right there. Izzy Ashbourne still up there. A little bit of traffic on that on that slide, and Recky just wasn't able to handle that ball right there. Yeah, it just hits the antenna. Caught all of it, in fact. So it's a two-point game here in the first set, and already a much more competitive feel to this match than when Minnesota was in Madison on October 13th. The Badgers swept Minnesota. But Wisconsin is hitting 500 right now, and Dana Recky is hitting 364 for Wisconsin. Minnesota's going to have to do something to cool the Badgers down a little bit as this match wears on. Well, I think part of it's got to be in the serving game. I mean, you know, Wisconsin's known for a really tough serving game, but also to be a really good first contact team. And if they want to put some pressure on Wisconsin and getting Recky out of that offense, then they're going to have to. Minnesota's going to have to put some pressure from the service line to knock them into out of system. Big serve here for Steph Samity. She was cut from her sixth grade volleyball team, if you can believe that. And here she is now, a two-time All-American for Minnesota. She can't get to that one from Loberg, but it was out of play. And a one-point game now with Samity going right behind the line again. Keeps 
it alive for Wisconsin. This is Loberg off the block. Redke saves it. Loberg again. Another block, but it's out of bounds. It's a nice recovery by Loberg right there. I mean, that, in, you know, in the series before that, on that previous point, I think she just kind of choked up a little bit, didn't get her feet to the ball, or the set was just a little bit too tight, and tried to guide that tip, but it guided it out of bounds. Had two good swings there, and it worked her way. Retke got that one over the tape. And Pittman forced that one through in front of Retke, and Minnesota is not backing down. Well, this is something in a 6-2. We don't get to see Reagan Pittman do a lot of take off of one foot, but they have her back there on the right side. She's able to use that one foot slide. One of her best weapons that she has in her arsenal as an attacker. It was nice to see her bring that out and for it to be advantageous to her. Loberg has been outstanding in the first set for Wisconsin. Seven kills for the junior from Geneva, Illinois. Just one error, and she's got Wisconsin on the verge of taking this first set. No oh boy, that last hit had a lot of heat on it by Loberg down the line. I wouldn't want to be in front of that one. Clark, what a save. But Hilly couldn't get it over. And Minnesota makes it a one-point set again. Wait, was that ruled a point for Wisconsin? They must have ruled Rollins was in the net. Kylie Miller's out, then, you know, um, Bailey Menemann is doing a good job. Now it was in a 5-1, now it's a 6-2. It's just finding ways to make your team work. And it's pretty impressive on what Minnesota, I think, has done within the Big Ten with some of the, you know, the issues that have gone on with the injuries on their team. Tamada Jalonga, the true freshman setter from Croatia, is on the floor right now for Minnesota, number one. And it's Reagan Pittman behind the line. Thomas Aquinas High School in Spring Hill, Kansas. Recky in the middle. Here comes Hart, who had a great first set, and that's off the block. And out of bounds, last touch by Wisconsin, so a point for Minnesota. Hart's got six kills tonight. That's a nice chicken wing dig right there. And that ball's inside for Hart to have to go get it. But she gets her feet there, gets up on it. Knows that there's a lot of space to her left side on Wisconsin's right side. And uses the block, uses Wisconsin's block to find a point. Big time kill from Molly Haggerty, the redshirt junior from Chicagoland. Where's number 23 for Michael Jordan, by the way. And her teammate Lauren Barnes, this is a homecoming of sorts for Barnes, the Minnesota transfer. Another Minnesota product behind the line for Wisconsin, Izzy Ashburn, the true freshman. Morgan with the set to Miyabe. And a point off the block for Wisconsin. That play looked a little bit out of rhythm for, for Minnesota. I don't know if the middle knew that she was going to take that that set from DeLongo or if Alexis Hart thought she was going to take it. You know, what we, what we mentioned in the break is that that was Taylor Morgan's, I think, first attempt, correct, for the whole match was just right there. She didn't have any in the first set, surprisingly. Big time swing from Heidi Miyabe. Miyabe! Point you! I mentioned Miyabe out of Southern Idaho Junior College. She was the NJCAA Division I National Player of the Year last year. Her first season with Minnesota. It was Bailey McMenamin. Saved by Hilly to Retke. Off the block. Hartz and Morgan team up for the stuff. A lot of great effort over there by Wisconsin. That's a tough ball for Retke to have to take. It's coming over her right shoulder, a little bit blind to have to go up and go up and hit it. And Minnesota's block was just waiting there to stop it. Recky on the slide. Another great tandem block by Minnesota that time as McGraw saves it. Here comes Hart. Cross court, she got it to go. Just looking at where that Wisconsin block was lined up against Alexis Hart. They were a little bit closer to the line. Alexis Hart had a lot of cross court to hit into. Clean shot deep to the Wisconsin zone. 
Haggerty again with a run stopper for Wisconsin that time. Five and three, Minnesota. I really like how Molly Haggerty just takes a hefty swing at a lot of balls. And we didn't see a lot of that in the first set. Starting to find her rhythm. Getting one set out of the way. Starting to unleash. But Minnesota has avoided the Wisconsin run so far. They've got a three-point lead here in the second set. Art has been outstanding. And you noticed earlier in the season, her numbers were a little bit down. And you wonder, boy, is, is it just her senior year? Maybe the pressure that comes from that. But look, with, with all of the turnover at the setter position for Minnesota, that's going to affect a lot of hitters' numbers. Back and forth we go, point Wisconsin. Number 19, Daniel Mark, active service. Right here. Here comes Dana Recky. That eats up McGraw. Minnesota on top of it. And that was out. Was wide that? shot by Steph Samity as she tried to play the line. It's a good block set up by Wisconsin right there. Didn't give her a lot of space. Loberg has her hands over the net. Right there, and Samity just gets and turns that ball past the line for an error. But Wisconsin again can't string consecutive points together. And CC McGraw goes behind the line. Bailey McMenamin is the setter right now for Minnesota. She's been alternating reps with Tamata DeLonga. Dangerous pass, and it ultimately becomes an overpass, and Madonna Rollins punishes it. Man, as a hitter, when you see that overpass coming your way at the net, your eyes get big, you jump up, and you want to make sure you take care of it. Good work by Rollins. Just a sophomore. A lot of volleyball ahead of her. Hilly across the way to Loberg. McMenamin back to Samity. It comes down to Hilly. Point for Wisconsin, a kill for Grace Loeber. It's a nice series to end that, that point right there by Wisconsin. Good first contact on that dig by Izzy Ashbourne. Kept him in system. Hilly had all hitters on board, and Loeber got the, got the call to care of it. Tough serve by Hilly. Back to Rollins. And she atones for the difficulty on the serve received by throwing it right back in Sydney Hilly's face. Point you. Well, is looking at Kelly Sheffield right now. You know, do I need to go further out? Do I need to take that line? Looked like Rollins had a lot of line to hit into right into Hilly's lap. Good eye by the Wisconsin back row. Samity shoots it long. Offensively tonight, it's been the Alexis Hart, Adonna Rollins show for Minnesota. They have a combined 14 kills. Wisconsin is an excellent serving team. In fact, they have almost two aces per set but three service errors so far tonight. And no aces in this match. Here's Barnes. Niave in the middle that time. She strokes it down. Nice first oh, contact by Kill Kelly there. She managed that serve very, very nicely to keep Minnesota in system. Good finish by Miyabe past a double block. Minnesota is white hot right now, hitting 500 in the second set. Great serve by Rollins. Pittman on the overpass. Point you. Look at this knuckle. It's kind of sunk. That ball just dropped, and right there, Pittman just took care of it. Good for the blocker to try to go up and stop it, but it just wasn't going to happen. Out of the middle, a whistle after the kill by Danielle Hart. Pittman may have been up in the net that time. Here's Tiffany Clark. And Recky with an uncharacteristic miscue. You never see that, and Minnesota's fans love it. Oh, she wanted that ball really badly. Just a, just didn't time it perfectly. Pretty aggressive with it. Blocked it down on her own side of the net. That's something that she would normally just eat up. 
Got to block it out of her mind now. Six errors for Wisconsin. Three for Dana Repke. Who's hitting just 200 now after a hot start to this match. Jalanga over to Hart. It's Duello, a tapper, and a point for Wisconsin. They needed that. Good patience on each side of the net for that rally. A nice, smart finish right there for Duello, just tipping it right over the block. Pittman's back there as a middle, playing defense behind the left side block. Tough for her to get as a middle. Good court awareness. Izzy Ashburn now averaging just under a half ace per set. That's tops in the Big Ten and number 16 in the nation. Morgan gathers her own blocked shot. Out of the back row, that's Barnes. Hilly, Retke. Zip on that, and Minnesota picks it up. Haggerty with the save. Hilly streaks in. A battle here between Minnesota and Wisconsin. Out of bounds off the block. Minnesota leads 13-9. Response by Minnesota after dropping the first set 25-22. Bailey McMenamin unexpectedly thrust into the starting setter's role this season. She had not played in her career until this year. She's a sophomore. Wisconsin wins side out after the McMenamin serve. A way to get that momentum back quick. First contact right there, first thrust. Wisconsin took care of it. And everyone knows that the ball is probably going to go to Repke, and Repke still finds a way to get a kill. A miss hit by Hart. It comes back to Clark for Wisconsin. Hilly with the save at the net. She got it to Loberg, but Minnesota was ready. Blocked by Repke. It looked like Alexis Hart right there. Just hit it right back into the block of Retke versus maybe take it just cross court and find some space under the floor and let the backcourt defense of Wisconsin take care of it. McMenamin on the second ball to Morgan, and that's long. Taylor Morgan has not been a factor yet for Minnesota offensively. Hugh McMenamin or Jalanga, whoever the center has been, have not gotten in rhythm yet. This time it's Samity cross court. Right back to Lober. Samity with the kill in front of Clark. There was just enough space for Sam to be really successful down the line. And looked like Clark was a little bit back on her heels getting ready for that ball. Rachel Kill. Hugh McCutcheon just called for a substitution. Hart to the bench. Rachel Kill Kelly, the freshman from Shakopee, Minnesota, behind the line. Seeing a lot of playing time as a true freshman. Retke with a missile. That was such a good swing. I mean, Hilly's pulled off the net a little bit, and that's, you know, to take that second contact. And still with that, and that's a tough ball on the right side when it's coming at you that way as a set for a hitter. And a great serve that is saved by Kill Kelly. Samity to Recky, who had the dig in the back row. That's Danielle Hart in the middle, and another point for Wisconsin. You blink your eyes, and the Badgers have tied this second set up on a 5-1 run. Well, I wasn't even quite sure that Daniel's heart tip was even going to go over the net, so... Donna Hart, what stands out more than anything, Laura, you were just talking about this, one error a piece. You just hardly ever see error numbers that low, and we are well into the second set. Well, it also just says, you know, obviously the error numbers are low and their hitting percentage is high, but they're just managing their game really well. They're not taking any swings that, they're not forcing anything. They're keeping the ball in play, and when the set takes them to a spot that they're able to get a kill, they take advantage of it. Pittman was ready to knock that one down, but Wisconsin was ready. Another tenacious block up front by Minnesota. They are the Big Ten's best blocking team. 
McMenamin, the setter, found Rollins that time, and there was too much heat for Tiffany Clark. A lot of nice space for Adonna Rollins to hit in there. I mean, she's, she is just a high flyer. Quick set out there, high, hard, and deep to that corner. Tough ball to defend for anybody. Great serve by McGraw. Hart. Pittman that time, that's in. Point for Minnesota. It's a really nice transition play by Minnesota. We haven't seen a lot of transition in the, that go to the middle for Minnesota right here. So here's that first contact. Gets up to McMenamin, finds that gap with Pittman. She's one on one and she's usually gonna win that battle right there. Minnesota surging out of the first timeout. It's a three-point lead for Minnesota in the second set. Going on tonight, and fittingly, it's a battle of number one versus number one. Both teams 13-1 and one in conference play. Wisconsin does own the tiebreaker because they beat Minnesota earlier this season in Madison. A lot at stake here in the rematch in the Twin Cities. Kelly was blocked by Pittman. And some miscommunication, Wisconsin couldn't clear it. And that is just really frustrating as a team right there. Miscommunication, you lock eyes, and once there's any sort of hesitation, it almost always leads to an error. We just saw it right there. 4 nothing run for Minnesota. Over to Loberg. Blocked. Ashburn saved it. Somehow it got over for Wisconsin. Some fingers and a point for the Badgers. Loberg continues to click offensively for Wisconsin with her ninth kill. You know what's pretty impressive that I'm noticing from Wisconsin is that, you know, these outsides are getting a lot of swings, but it's a lot of second efforts. When they get blocked by Minnesota, they have their whole team around them to pick up that block so they can have another attempt and another swing to go after it. What a dig by Hilly, the setter. Dwello is blocked by Pittman. That's a tough ball to recover. That ball just went straight down. Really nice technique by Pittman there. She just got in front of that ball and managed it really well. Straight down. First block of the match for Reagan Pittman. Dodge out of the back row for Wisconsin. Here's Loberg again. McGraw streaks in, sets up Rollins. Loberg has been the workhorse for Wisconsin tonight. And Hart missed it wide. Point Minnesota. They've got a five-point lead here as the second set wears on, bolstered by a 6-1 run. Really phenomenal dig by CeCe McGraw right there. The ball goes over on the second contact. Good, quick set to Hart, but it just went wide. Right now, on the front line for Minnesota. Well, that passing game that Wisconsin relies on so much on serve-receive is kind of just going a little bit awry right now. They're not able to set up their full offense. The ball's just being pretty predictable on where it's going to go because they're out of system. And their best when they're able to make that first contact work for them, have all the hitters at their control and being able to go after it. Oberg winds up. Samity slaps at it. McGraw slides into Rollins, and finally the block returns the favor for Wisconsin that time. Danielle Hart teamed up with Madison Tuello. Wisconsin not done yet, but Minnesota is smelling a second set win. It's a nice high hard swing for Loberg, and good recovery by Minnesota right there. And Adonna Rollins had a pretty big block in front of her, and she challenged and she came up on the short end of that one. So here's Lauren Barnes. Aced up Minnesota, her former team, twice in Madison on October 13th. The time it's Kill Kelly on the receiving end. Miabe has been a key factor for Minnesota tonight. And I think a lot of people would think that, that that two ball that's being set in the middle right there is an easy ball to track or to block or to defend. And it is one of the toughest balls, I think, to defend in volleyball. That two ball right in the middle, I mean, you see it coming, but you have so many angles as a hitter in which you can attack into. A collision, Pittman eventually made the set, the taller player, you'd expect that. 
all kinds of confusion defensively for Minnesota on that point. And the kill goes to Danielle Hart, the redshirt sophomore from Virginia Beach. Hart to the bench. And Tiffany Clark to serve. She's got 17 aces this season. Make it 18. She was graced by a friendly roll off the tape. What a really smart serve. And good call by the Wisconsin coaching staff right there. There's a lot of space that you can serve into in that short serve. Alexis Hart isn't normally a primary passer. It forces her to have to pass or some CC McGraw to have to come up and take it. Clark picks out Rollins that time. A whistle on a double hit. And so Wisconsin has made it a three-point game so far. And before things get any closer, Hugh McCutcheon of Minnesota calls for a timeout. You know, and just like that, that's a game of volleyball, right? Minnesota was feeling it. They were going after it. They had a little bit of miscommunication right there, and all of a sudden, it swings over Wisconsin. They're managing the serving game really well. Wisconsin is dominating the border battle for this athletic year, 145 to 15 based on the point system, but there are 20 points at stake that would go towards the border battle between Minnesota and Wisconsin this year based on the volleyball match. McGraw had a tough time with that one. That's up in our direction. Haggerty saves it, gets it way over to Duello. And on the free ball, Wisconsin survives. Hart, a quieter second set after a great first set. A great rally right now as Duello set that one to the back row. What a dig. Hart fists at that one. Here's McGraw, who has to clear it. Minnesota all over the floor right now. Clark with the up. Recky in the middle, off some fingers and down, and Wisconsin holds firm. Two-point game. What a fun rally that was. I'm just tired from watching it. Just really nice layout right there by Clark for that middle transition. Recky hitting it high, flipping it up off the block, and tough for the, the defense of Minnesota to recover. Minnesota needs to halt a 4 nothing run. Clark in rhythm behind the service line. Bad pass, and Hart went right into the trees of Wisconsin's block. That was a really tough set to swing away on right there. Hart got a little bit trapped by that tough that tight set, and Duella took advantage of it. Calls herself the grandma of the team, the redshirt senior. She's been here on campus for a long time. A Minnesota institution. Her dad actually oversees the cross-country and track and field program. So someone who's got the pulse of the Minnesota team at all times, it's Taylor Morgan, and she begins the third set on the bench with her sophomore teammate, Adonna Rollins, serving to get us going once again. Block, Miabe saves it. Here's McGraw to Rollins from the back row. This hit by Duello, and Wisconsin couldn't recover. Well, that just wasn't a very pretty play right there all, all the way around. But if you look again for uh, Minnesota, they have Alexis Hart coming across the front row. They usually have Samantha Samity coming across the front row. So they're staying in that, that starting rotation that they started with them set to. And a good start for Minnesota in the third set. And it, it's striking, frankly, to see Minnesota play multiple points like this without Samity on the floor in particular. I mean, we're talking a bona fide six rotation player there, but that's just the way that this season has gone for Minnesota. And right now, the Gophers are hot. Pittman cleans up the overpass, and it's a 3-0 start to the third set. Nice serve by Donna Rollins. It drops, and Lauren Barnes has just got the best of her. And any good hitter that's up at the net is going to take advantage of that overpass when they're able when they're able to. Collins has been serving very well so far tonight. But Haggerty finally wins side out for Wisconsin. A little bit of good competition going back and forth across the net there. Players are starting oh, yeah. to look each other in their eyes, clapping their hands at each other. Oh, yeah. Getting on it. Crowd has been in it since 
Well, an hour before this match, in fact. And they open the doors to the path. It's been packed ever since. Haggerty again. On the tapper, she dots the line at a point for Wisconsin. She managed that final contact really well. That barely went over the top of the block. Tough ball to manage for even the block to come down and take or that right back to take. Ashburn with a zipper. Hard is blocked. Down in play on Minnesota's side, and Wisconsin is tied it right back up. I think that's a little bit of a trap set there by DeLonga, but also Alexis Hart didn't have to swing away at it in the block. What did you want to see there? Maybe manage it into the block, flip it up, tip it up into the block, and then let your coverage, your block coverage, take care of it and get another swing. Well, that time Pittman targeted the hands. And it works for Minnesota, a point for the U as they shout inside Missouri Pavilion with every point. They've got different colored cards, gold on one side of the arena, maroon on the other side that they hold up with every Minnesota point. And they're awfully quiet before Minnesota serves. Well, Sydney Hilly could have made a run at that serve received, but she almost wiped out. And it's Reagan Pittman with the ace. Well, this is just a BB right there at Lauren Barnes, and it got a little bit high on her. She didn't back out of it. It could have gone out of bounds, but that contact wasn't managed very well. Pittman is off to a torrid start to this third set. Three kills and an ace already on the slide. Recky, Minnesota doesn't have a chance. Right back, back in the match, number 41, Grace Wilber, Hagerty back to serve. You know, to Lauren Barnes' credit right there, you know, she got aced on the play before, but she stuck her platform out there, held it just fine. Hilly got it to the hitter that she knew could hit her out of this rotation, and it worked. A quiet 11 kills for Dana Recky so far, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it, it's just been an interesting battle back and forth across the net. I mean, obviously, two really top teams. No one's dominating anything, and it's just coming to some streaks of points that are going to one side versus the other, and who's finishing first. But we're only in the third set. There is plenty of time for Dana Recchi to take over the match, or at the least, a set. She's got a couple of kills back to back as we're tied at five. Again, hitting over 500 against Minnesota in her career. That time, Loberg stuffs Miabe. Here's Hart. Recchi. Clark with the dig. Hilly to Loeber. Down the line, that's in. A point for Wisconsin. Nice swing by Loeberg out there down the line. I mean, she had two blockers on top of her and still able to find that space for a kill. Miabe <laughs> gets that one to go. You know, Miyabe's arm is just deceptively fast. You can yeah. get yourself in a good spot on her as a blocker, and all of a sudden that arm comes through, hand is quick through the ball. It's just a different space and a different pace and a different tempo than I think a lot of uh, defenders are used to seeing. And remember, she was an outside in junior college at Southern Idaho for the last two years. She's playing on the right side now and has really thrived in this 6-2. Benjamin with the serve. Goldberg with a vicious kill. That might have been redirected. Yes, it was, and it's a point for Wisconsin. Boy, was that sharp cross court. She really took a nice swing at this, and she had a lot of space just to split the block. I mean, that block wasn't closed when it said she took that sharp cross court, and it worked. Goldberg has led Wisconsin in kills in the last two matches. Recky paces the Badgers right now with 12, but Goldberg, as you saw, right behind her with 11. Samity runs into the net and missed it wide. She got a nice touch on that. That was a tough ball to hit. That ball, again, is going to be a trap set. Got her feet there, got her hand on it, able to see that block underneath the top of the block, which is a hard place to stop, and took advantage of, of, of what the ball gave her. So here's Kill Kelly. Samity calls for it back to Rollins. Blocked by Hilly and Hartz up front for Wisconsin. Oh, 
Loberg got that one through to the back row. Here's Rollins. They really work Loberg for that point, and the third time is the charm. She's moving that ball around with a lot of range. You know, we've seen her hit cross court. We've seen her hit deep cross court as well as sharp cross court. But she really is good going down that line and took advantage of just sending it deeper than where that right back defender is from Minnesota. That is hit the wrong direction by CeCe McGraw. Wisconsin service game working. Sydney Hilly gets the job done. Another Minnesota native. error that time. It makes it tough on a team coming back, following up an ace like that with an error that doesn't even make it across the net. Makes it tough on how you're earning points and how you're feeling if you're in control of you know the pace and the tempo of the match. Dodge, Hilly, Duello through the block. Back in the match Duello is really deadly on this play. It's one of my favorite plays that Wisconsin has, you know. Hilly's moving forward, flips it back behind her on that back two, and Duello can go either to the right or to her left, and usually is, puts herself in a kill position for that set. This third set smacks up the first set for Wisconsin. The Badgers are hitting 571 here in set number three. And that time, Haggerty reads the block brilliantly, and the Badgers are up three. You know, just starting to look like, just watching Wisconsin and how they're competing and, you know, they're kind of pumping their fists, giving a little bit extra of eye glance at Minnesota to make a point that they're starting to turn it a little bit to their side. Yeah, you may have got us in that second set, but we're not going anywhere. And Haggerty has strung a couple of points together for Wisconsin. One of the largest leads of the match, Badgers by four. Well, nice defense right there by Tiffany Clark. And Hilly just sends it all the way across the court. Nice way to thread it past that block for Haggerty. Badgers look good in the third set. Well, Wisconsin has been volatile in its set-by-set -set hitting percentages. 487 in the first, down to 170 in the second. And again, a blistering 625 here in the third. What, what do you account for that just variation? Well, they're managing their airs. I mean, that second, you know, the first set, they were playing, both sides are playing near nearly perfect volleyball, but Wisconsin just got the best of it. The second set, we started to see Wisconsin make the airs, not only from the service line, but also from attacking. And they just looked like they just woke up. Not that they were asleep before, but they just looked very convicted in what they're, you know, how they're going to play this third set against Minnesota. Six service errors for Wisconsin tonight. Uncharacteristic. Duello off the block. Samity with the second ball to Rollins. And that splits Barnes and Clark in the back row for a Minnesota point. Point you. Nice manage right here by Minnesota. They have a true setter that's not on the floor right now. Samity takes that second contact, sets it high. And I just like how Adonal Rollins reaches high each time when she swings and is able to find space by hitting the top of the block and then goes to the back court of the Wisconsin defense. Too long that time from Rollins. Or was it? Was there a touch? Point Wisconsin. Minnesota appears to accept that. They just gave the sign for a substitution. And it's Tiffany Clark ready to serve for Wisconsin. Clark is from Naperville, Illinois. Collins with a big time swing, but Wisconsin is there. Haggerty returns the paper. It was kicked up by Miyabe. Unclear on what side of the net. It is a net violation either way on Miyabe. Something that Hugh McCutcheon takes exception to. Well, from here, it looked like her foot hit it, hit the net as she's trying to recover the ball off the block and it dribbled down. Yes. Good eye, Laura. 
block wasn't fully sealed, but good second effort by a blocker, and it, the block came up on the other side of the net. We're wondering the same thing. What is the problem? It's Wisconsin asking the up official for a clarification right now. And I think in each floor, captain just wanted to know what was going on, and uh, Patty Rolf wanted to explain it. Once you talk to one floor captain, you usually talk to the other floor captain. Sidney Pilly, the floor captain for Wisconsin. And Miyabe missed that one long. Minnesota thought it was a point. It's instead awarded to the Badgers. Miyabe thought that was in, and Hugh McCutcheon, reading the reaction of his team on the floor right now, flashes the green card for a challenge. Well, I don't know, very close. In play, it looked out. Still up. I mean, that, that looks pretty clearly out to the me. The ball is out. Good swing by Pittman right there, just a little bit quicker than what Dana Recky could get in her hands over the net. And that ball starts rolling along that tape right there. You just never know quite when it's going to fall off and you're going to have to recover. Haggerty flies in and is blocked by Pittman and Miyabe. Here come the Gophers. This is one formidable block right here with Miyabe and Pittman. I mean, they are just pressed over, directing it back into the court and down. Pittman plays with fire. You can see how Minnesota feeds off the spirit that she brings to the floor. Over the block that time and out of bounds. We're tied. Four nothing run for Minnesota. And Wisconsin needs to burn a timeout. Well, but just like that, you know, we, we were talking about how cleanly Wisconsin was playing an air free. And, you know, you make some basically four quick airs right there and you bring Minnesota back into with them not really having to earn anything. And uh, that gets really frustrating. It's not managing the ball, not uh, maybe forcing some shots and, and versus just playing, playing some balls and making it more natural. Remember when Wisconsin was hitting 625 in the third set? They're down to 391 now. Plummeted pretty quickly as Minnesota has gotten back in this third set, thanks in large part to Adonna Rollins, who's a really, really well-rounded player. She does a little bit of everything. You know, last year as a freshman, the six-rotation outside hitter, I mean, she was passing and hitting and attacking. Just to, really just kind of, you know, one of the young all-stars that was going to happen for Minnesota. And as she's progressed through this season, we're starting to see him getting that pep back, not only on the defensive side of the passing side of it, but just the attacking range. That she can, how she distributes the ball when she's up there and just taking that full swing on the outside. Honorable mention, All-American last year as a freshman, averaging 3.11 kills per set. Check that 2.62 kills per set, beg your pardon, as a sophomore. 10 kills tonight, and she's hitting 292. And Hugh McCutcheon has talked about her. She's improved in all aspects, he said. She's developed a range, she's hitting different shots, and she's looked really impressive serving and in the back row on defense. It's been a tale of two halves in this third set for Wisconsin. They played a clean third set through the first 26 points, if you can believe that, and now back-to-back -back errors on the last two points. They're trying to snap that streak here. Recky is blocked, but that's out of bounds. And a point for Wisconsin. It's a good way for any team to come out of a timeout that your coach has called is get that first point as fast as you can and get the serve back on your side of the net. Here comes Izzy Ashburn. 37 aces on the season. Make it. Not quite 38. What a save by Hart, and McGraw got it over. Haggerty terminates as Miyabe was into the net. That was some really great defense over here wow. by, you know, off of that serve received by Alexis Hart to keep that ball in play. That was one tough serve by Izzy Ashburn. 
But unfortunately, Minnesota has to see it again. To McGraw. Jalanga, the setter, finds Hart. What a great dig in the back row by Barnes of Wisconsin. Pittman stuffs that. Wisconsin keeps it alive to Haggerty. Deep and long, a point for Minnesota. Pittman back to throw. Dragon Pittman serving to tie. Punches that one into some Minnesota teeth, and it's out of bounds at the scorer's table. Wisconsin wins side out, and lo and behold, it's Molly Haggerty behind the line. Seven kills in this third set for Haggerty. It's so good to see her back at 100% this year. She's playing like the, like the player that everyone, when she was in the recruiting process, thought oh, yeah. the player she could be. Outstanding basketball player in high school as well at St. Francis. Glen Allen, Illinois. But again, the, the head scratcher for Wisconsin, statistically anyway, is the seven service errors. Again, this is one of the best serving teams in the Big Ten. 1.75 aces per set. And seven service errors and just two service aces through two plus sets tonight. That comes all the way back to M.E. Dodge. Recky gets another crack at it, and this time gets the kill. That was a good manage there by Emmy Dodge, taking that really high ball that was coming over and understanding where she was, and you know in that space that, that ball was going to be in. But getting it right back to Recky, good choice by Hilly right there. She wants that ball, and she's able to terminate. Down the line on the serve by Recky, McMenamin streaks in to save it, and Morgan is able to keep it in play on a deep attack to the back row, and that is Taylor Morgan's first kill of the night. Well, she's just looking, it's not the kill maybe that you want or how you'd like it to go, but she knows that she she got her hands on it, made the best of a tough situation, cut it back to that right back corner, and she's just kind of giggling like, well, you know, shrugs her shoulders, smiles, it kills a kill. She sure did cut that one. Here's Rollins at the pin, and Hilly blocks it. And it's a point for Wisconsin. All well, those second contacts that lead a, a hitter into the net like that just make me get a little concerned about the injuries that can occur. Rollins has gone cross court like that multiple times tonight, and it works again. Well, we have a good advantage right here, how we can see the Wisconsin block is lined up. And, you know, they have her a little bit. She had a lot of space on that cross court to take. And it looked a little bit like Tiffany Clark was behind the block versus being on the edge of that left hand of the middle block. Rollins working on a double-double, and CeCe McGraw ties things up with a primo serve. Awesome is right. Boy, these serves that just dribble over the net. If you're not catching it early or prepared or thinking that you could take that first contact as a middle, it can get the best of you. They make the C sign for her. Caroline Caitlin, by the way, CC McGraw, and that's out of play. That was close, but she just couldn't quite tuck it inside the line. Now to Lauren Barnes as suddenly we're in the late stages of this third set. Rollins blocks, he keeps it up. Right back to her. He drops that one right in front of Molly Haggerty to tie things up. Well, that was a nice repeat by McMenamin going back to Rollins to get that second shot of getting a kill. And it just, you know, here it is. First ball's blocked, good contact. McMenamin goes back to her. And I don't think Molly Haggerty was expecting that ball could come that sharp cross court in her in her area. And she reloads Rollins that is so fast in between balls. Over to Haggerty. Who returns the favor. She throws that one right at it down to Rollins. And Wisconsin yo-yos back in front. That was a little bit of right back at you right there. 
Anything you can do, I can do better. It's interesting looking at the, I guess, the on-court demeanor of both these teams. Minnesota looks like it's smiling more. Wisconsin has had its game faces on throughout this third set. Not to say either attitude is better. It looks like Minnesota is playing looser. Wisconsin is playing like it's on a mission. And Hugh McCutcheon calls a timeout. Tiffany Clark and company are amped right now, on top by two late in the third set. How about Molly Haggerty in this third set, Laura? Ooh, you know, again, we're starting to see her just, you know, come alive. We started seeing this, you know, just this whole season. What Molly Haggerty. Wisconsin recovers. Great dig by Barnes, who does it again after Haggerty is stuffed one more time. Third try, saved by DeLonga. Wisconsin again in system. Right up Main Street by Recky, but Minnesota has made some sensational saves on this point. Wisconsin answering on the bump pass over the net. Here's Miyabe with the terminal kill. To tie it up in the third set. Laura, you said it, there is not a match like this anywhere in college volleyball tonight, or for that matter, this week. And boy, we're not even three sets in. And has this match delivered? Wisconsin and Minnesota tied for first in the Big Ten. Wisconsin is trying to snap a long losing streak inside Maturi Pavilion. They have not won since 2014. Minnesota is trying to avenge uh, Rather swift loss in Madison on October 13th when the Badgers swept the Gophers. And this match from the first set has had the feel of something pretty big when you look at ramifications going forward. And here is that last point, an excellent one for both teams. You just see some good play at the net and just managing the ball all the way around. You know, Maggie's going to get a series of of sets right here, you know, she gets one in a row, then two in a row, and it gets stopped, and you're just wondering, like, where's that gonna go again? Third in a row to Hilly. I mean, sorry, to Haggerty, but the defense by Minnesota just hung in there long enough that once they get a good enough dig, we see a free ball for a free ball coming up. They get to manage that contact. Naomi just got on that ball so fast. I mean, it was, that is a tough ball to handle. You can just see just the happiness of that whole team that they're, you know, supporting her as she's developed this season. So a surge for Minnesota, and out of the timeout, it's Adana Rollins serving behind Adi Miyabe for Minnesota. Here we go. Into the net. Huge point for Wisconsin. It's been Wisconsin who has been plagued by service errors in this match, but an inopportune time for Minnesota's third service error of the night. And here is Izzy Ashburn. Boy, it always seems like she's serving. Cross court. Yabe does it again. Well, nice serve by Ashburn. And Rollins just manages that ball flawlessly on that first contact. And good set, Miyabi's just, it's just feeling it right now. I'd give her the ball again. I don't know, are we seeing a coming out party here for the junior, Adi Miyabe, junior college transfer? <laughs> Pittman with the dig. Dolonga, Miyabe riding the hot hand. This time Wisconsin's ready for her. Haggerty has been tough in the third set for Wisconsin. Offense for defense now for Minnesota as the libero checks in. And Wisconsin does the opposite. They've got Grace Loberg back on the floor. There's some big power up top at the net for Wisconsin. Set point here. Off the block. Clark backs it up. Here's Loberg, but a whistle and a point for Minnesota. Kelly Sheffield can't believe it. 
think they called a double hit. Still for a kill, Kelly. And here she goes. Off the block, Wisconsin ties it up. It's been the Molly Haggerty show in the third set offensively for Wisconsin, but that time it's Grace Loberg with her 13th kill. It's a good manage by Haggerty on that first contact. And nice set. Loberg going high off those hands again. Goes back against the defense, tough to recover. Samity. Loberg beams one down the line. Set point, Wisconsin. Laura, we have been tied at 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. What about 27? Here we go, Sydney Hilly. Yes, we're tied on the service error. Oh, man, is that frustrating as a coach. That looks says it all. <laughs> Agerty, what a save off the block. Lover tries it again. Minnesota's block, outstanding. Pittman reads the sneak attack well, but Danielle Hart almost fooled Minnesota. They have to clear. Duello blocked and out of bounds on Minnesota's side. Wisconsin can seal the deal again. Oh, this is really fun right now. The coaches are getting into it. The benches are really into it. <laughs> There's just a lot of jousting at the net going back and forth on who's going to manage that ball. Both teams have blinked behind the service line, and they're just too amped right now. Grace Loberg with another service error for Wisconsin, number nine. Minnesota has committed some service errors on set point. No one wants to close the door here in the third set, and we're not complaining. Haggerty off the block. Dana Recchi checks in for Wisconsin. Tiffany Clark goes behind the line. After the 10th kill for number 23 in red, Molly Haggerty in this set. Wisconsin hopes its 30th point will win them the set. Minnesota got, got caught with McFadden. Big time basketball player in high school as well. His brother actually played college basketball at UW Milwaukee, and he brings some competitive fire to the floor along with a lot of other Badgers, including Tiffany Clark, who gets things going in the fourth set. Clark served at one point one of the many set points for Wisconsin in that third set, and she gets Wisconsin off to a 1 0 start again. Minnesota's back is up against the wall now. Wisconsin can win the match with a win in set four. Well, the Wisconsin block was all over Alexis Hart on that attack. There wasn't much space for Alexis Hart to hit into. And she didn't find any. DeLonga the setter to Miyabe. What a fantastic third set for Minnesota. And she saves that attack from Duello. And a beautiful cross-court shot by Alexis Hart, the senior. It was a really smart play by Alexis Hart. She had four hands in front of her. Sharp cross-court, really sharp cross-court, but she just sliced it right over there. Off speed, tough for any defender to have to run down. Clark already received her degree from Minnesota in business marketing education. She walked in May, as she will officially graduate in December, to clarify, but she did walk at the commencement ceremony in May. Haggerty right back to work in set number four. 
Again, you know, right here, Wisconsin getting that second effort. You know, they pick up it up off on the block. Nice set by Hilly, able to beat Minnesota's block, and she's able to find space. And Miyabe has become almost a go-to hitter for Minnesota as this match is worn on. It's Wisconsin up three to one now, as that one lands short middle. Here comes Ashburn for Wisconsin. Nicked the tape. Taylor Morgan. Molly Haggerty off the block. Clark all over it. Good point brewing here. Swing and a miss. Point Wisconsin. Just a tough ball right there. A little bit of miscommunication between DeLonga and Mayabi. Mayabi thought she could hit it over, just didn't work her way and instead hit it into the net. Wisconsin gets a point here. Perhaps Yuma McCutcheon calls a timeout. Ashburn dialing up some difficult serves. Here's Hart. Saved by Barnes, down to Clark. Haggerty gets it over. DeLonga in the middle, Morgan went deep off Ashburn and a point for Minnesota, they needed that. And Minnesota might be able to build off of that from Taylor Morgan, just being able to get that ball, a little bit higher ball, a two ball actually for her behind, behind the setter, took care of it. So they're gonna have to start digging themselves out of this little bitty hole. That's Morgan's second kill of the match. She averages two per set this year as Bailey McMenamin waits for the sham towel to be returned to the up official. There is air conditioning in here, right? There is air conditioning, but I, you're still gonna be sweaty. It's not, it's not gonna gonna take all the sweat off of you as a player. I could use that towel right now. Here's McMenamin. Recky, that was just punishing. And a point for Wisconsin. I almost feel bad for the volleyball. Hit the air out of it with a swing like that. Well, Minnesota is trying to get Morgan going here in the fourth set. Now she contends there was a touch there. The point goes to Wisconsin, and it's challenge time for Hugh McCutcheon, and, and why not? You're down in the fourth set. You're down in the match, two sets to one. This makes sense as far as a, a point. And instead of 6-2, 5-3 looks much better for Minnesota in the fourth. Now even if McCutcheon uses his final remaining challenge in the fourth set, he would get another one if this match goes to five. Kill Kelly to serve. Recky. Back it comes to Wisconsin. Hilly had to save it for Recky. Missed opportunity there for the Badgers, and Taylor Morgan makes him pay. Remember, we were wondering where Taylor Morgan was through the first three sets, and she's come out of the woodwork here in set number four. Three kills already in this set. Adonna Rollins, a point for Wisconsin. Well, Minnesota's going to need to use their middles, you know, to be successful offensively. They can't just keep giving it to the outsides and expect to ride that horse and think it's going to go their way. But it's also tough in a 6-2 for those middles to get used to two different setters and their three rotations across the net because those setters are going to deliver that ball a little bit differently, can mess up timing. It's just tough to get in a rhythm. Loberg, that's in. Point, Wisconsin. And there was a touch. And Minnesota is going to let that one go. High swing here that's past, oh, that's past the block. And 
It looked like CeCe McGraw tried to pull her arms away before that touch was called. Off the block, Danielle Hart knocked it over. Just tapped over by Danielle Hart. There was a bullet coming the other way from Taylor Morgan there. And eventually Wisconsin lands one. A helter-skelter point. And the Badgers are doubling up Minnesota now in the fourth set. It was nice being that tall by Danielle Hart that she can just reach up an arm right there and direct that ball over off of that, that line drive. Dig. Taylor Morgan, a force in the middle. It's going to help Minnesota a lot as long as they can keep feeding the ball to the middles and making sure that the Wisconsin block stays on us and have to honor the Minnesota middle blocker that's going to help out those outsides for Minnesota to get hot again. Morgan sits, Bailey McMenamin on the floor for Minnesota, the setter. Lober goes to the back row and puts it in front of Kill Kelly. Remember, Wisconsin got off to a similar start in the third set, only to see Minnesota roar back and take it all the way to 30-28. Wisconsin eventually won that third set. Put them on the doorstep here of sweeping the regular season series. Hilly gets us going with the serve, and Minnesota looks crisp out of the timeout. Point you. Talk about the resiliency for Minnesota this year again, getting off to a 13-1 start in Big Ten play with a revolving door at setter. They've gone through three setters so far this season. They've changed their lineup from a 5-1 to a 6-2 now. And they have found their way to still stay at the top of the table in the Big Ten. A couple of points now for Minnesota out of the timeout as they look to claw back in the fourth set and force a fifth. And we see May Ivy again getting back in there. Her first, her first run across the front row. They give her the ball, and she finds her way to get a kill. Keep feeding that kid the ball. Duello missed wide. Point for Minnesota, and it is 10 to 8. And for Idi Miyabe, a fresh face for Minnesota, not only this season, but in the past couple of weeks. She's got 10 or more kills in her last two matches. From the back row, McGraw to Samity to Rollins. And the block works for Wisconsin. They snap that miniature run by Minnesota. And you know, it just is a lot more attacking errors are happening on Minnesota's side that we're not used to seeing. That's a tough, that's just not the normal Minnesota game. They play, they're gonna play the long game, they're gonna make you play it a lot, they're gonna chip it over, they're gonna tip it over, and when it starts ending in, you know, these terminal errors, it's it's gonna be frustrating for them tonight if it continues this way. Minnesota's hitting 277 for the match, but just 0.95 to start the fourth set. And that was a missile from Molly Haggerty. She has dialed up some special sauce on a few of her attacks tonight. It was just that range. I mean, it's that sharp cross court to straight down the line. So, you know, deep cross court, she can just hit those spots so well. Here's Rollins. Take cover right in front of Lauren Barnes. It's been almost a, a miniature battle between Rollins and Haggerty. They have exchanged kills a couple of times tonight. Rollins with 13, now 14 kills to pace Minnesota. Haggerty with 19 for Wisconsin. For 20, yes. I just think that's a really powerful play right there. I mean, she just, that was just a nice push of a tip to get a kill. That ties her season high. Here she is again. Back row that time, but that's out of play. You know, credit right there to Sydney Hill. I mean, just busting 
herself to get across the court to make a play for that second contact. But she has really, I, I think, done a nice job of running down some, some balls that she's probably not used to running down in the first contact of her teammates. They serve to Haggerty that time, and Recky mops that up. Nice save on this pass coming up by Hilly. That one arm, that one hand goes up, and you know, any good middle's gonna read when your setter's in a tough spot. You, you wanna close close into her so that you're able to get a swing on that ball. Izzy Ashburn. Great save by McGraw for Minnesota. Great rally here. Morgan with the two ball. And Miyabe punishes it. She almost just looks surprised that she's able to do that as she smiles so big and celebrates. It's, it's really fun to see. Look at that set by Taylor Morgan. And man, did Miyabe get on that to go down the line. It's just, it's just a really sweet reaction. Well, how about Taylor Morgan, too? Doesn't every middle secretly want to be a setter? I don't think that's true. <laughs> that has never crossed my mind. No way. But good set by her. She may want to. In the back row, that's down from Molly Haggerty, who's been the go-to outside hitter for Wisconsin over the last two sets. She has really been good at just finding a lot of space wherever she decides to hit it on the Minnesota side. In the middle, Taylor Morgan. Keeping Minnesota alive in the fourth set. Three-point affair. Taylor Morgan is just so quick off the ground. I mean, she can jump so high, but... She was on that ball fast and a lot faster than what Recky was able to get her hands over the net to even touch it. You know, and she's only six feet tall, which nowadays, especially in the Big Ten, to be a middle blocker at six feet flat, that's on the shorter side. But she plays so much taller than that. And she's super quick. I mean, and uh, she's a great competitor. Perfect spot for her is in the middle. One of the top verticals on the team for Minnesota. But a vertical doesn't do you much good when you're trying to play an angle like that coming off Dana Recky's right arm. <laughs> 17 kills tonight for Recky, four errors. She's hitting 310. McGraw calls for it and sweeps it over. McGraw with another save. And Morgan is stuffed that time by Hilly and Danielle Hart. That's a junior and a redshirt sophomore plugging things up on the front line for Wisconsin. Yeah, I think McMiniman's decision making right there wasn't something that, that she would... Fantastic between Wisconsin and Minnesota. What you would expect from the two top teams in the Big Ten fighting for sole possession of first place. But Wisconsin has capitalized on Minnesota attack errors in the fourth set in particular. And they're hitting 314 in the fourth set. But for the match, rather, they're hitting 314 for the match. But a service error cuts Minnesota a break. Their 10th service error of the night. Dodge with the save. Hart with the kill. That was ruthlessly efficient. Doesn't get much cleaner than that from every contact from pass set to, to kill. Just like they draw it up. Sydney Hilly serving for Wisconsin. A career high 66 assists for Hilly tonight. She's been brilliant. Looking for 67. Dodge, Hilly, Loberg. Off the block and out of bounds, a point for Wisconsin. 
That first contact by Emmy Dodge was just, you know, just right on the spot. Yeah. That was able to keep an assistant in transition. Really nice dig to kill. Hilly to serve again, and Dodge is a player that you don't say her name a ton for Wisconsin. I mean, she's a defensive specialist. She plays in the back row exclusively, and yet she's played in every set this season for Wisconsin. You look, and she's almost always on the floor. Following the 11th service error of the night for Wisconsin, here's Steph Samity, junior from Clermont, Florida. And Danielle Hart has strung a couple of nice possessions together for Wisconsin. Great set here by Sydney Hilly, though. This ball gets passed a little tight, but she goes up, able to still get it with two hands and control it to Danielle Hart. It's nice to have a middle that can take care of a, of a set when, when the pass doesn't put you in a perfect situation. You touched on how improved Hart has been in conference play. Opponents were hitting 322 against her in non-conference, just 140. In conference plays, Clark does a somersault after saving that one. Here's Rollins, kept up by Barnes. Hilly picks out Dwello, who's blocked, and that's down and inbounds on Wisconsin's side. A point for Minnesota. I think Dwello to make that work, she's going to have to just kind of go for it a little bit more versus guide it into the hands. And you know, she had an idea right there, but she hit that low on that block, and that's a that's a tough place for the defense around you to pick up if it does get blocked. Minnesota wins these big points in the fourth set, and then you look at the score, and Wisconsin always seems to be up by five. They haven't been able to gain any ground. That's booted up by Rollins. Hart could not stay on her side. Hugh McCutcheon disagrees. Again, not, it's not the international game here where you can play the ball from back across the street if you wanted to. You have to stay on your side of the net. And it was ruled that Hart broke the plane. 70 assists for Sydney Hilly with her teammate Tiffany Clark serving. Clark nearly served up an ace. Miabe with a Big time swing. Here's Haggerty the other way for Wisconsin. Pittman almost mistimed that. What a save by Clark, the libero. Punched up by McGraw as the two liberos are one-upping each other in this point. Dweller is turned away. She's having a rough, a rough time over there right now. Some really good defense happening. You see that stab, almost that tomahawk chalk by CC McGraw, and then the ball goes over. But Duell just pulls this ball down in the low seam in that net, in, in the block, and that's a tough place to earn a living. <laughs> Speak from experience. I don't want to talk about my experience. <laughs> what are you talking about? You had a great career at Illinois. Final Four. Played for the legendary, the late great Mike Heber. He made the transition from player to coach. Worked in the Big Ten for a long time. Lots of good things to talk about. A lot of good experience. Let's just not talk about all the hitting errors and look. Tough lessons I had to learn as a player. That's long. Just one of those nights behind the line for Wisconsin. Uncharacteristically high number of service errors. Yeah, but they're still finding a way to win at yes. least two sets and still being ahead in this fourth set. And, you know, one of their strengths is not going their way. They're finding other ways to earn points and make it go their way. Again, this is the team, Wisconsin, preseason picked to win the Big Ten. Dana Recchi, tough angle. Wisconsin only lost two players from its 2018 team that finished the season ranked eighth. They returned five starters, five All-Americans, including that one, Dana Retke, who's got 20 kills tonight. They set up Morgan, and a quick one-timer leads to a Minnesota point. But they only have two to give before Wisconsin takes the match. 
Kill Kelly, back to serve. Back to Rachel Kill Kelly. Clark couldn't handle the heat from Steph Samity. And we can see that right here in front of us. That's a tough ball to manage. I mean, any ball that's coming at you down the line as a defender, it's not a lot of time to react. You got to see it really well, and you got to be strong in your stance to muscle it up. Goldberg gets it over. McMenamin to Morgan again. That's in. Don't look now. It's a three-point set. And this is something we've talked about earlier, is being able to close those sets. And each team has had their, their tough... Wisconsin and Minnesota have to play Nebraska and Penn State before the regular season ends. Recky. Great dig by Kill Kelly. Here's Rollins. What a tough shot. Just strong swing by Rutke and Kilkelly just stays in there. And look at that shot by Adonna Rollins. Good court awareness and good court vision to put the ball shot across the court. That's not something she was doing as a freshman, but Dana Rutke has been doing that for three years on campus for Wisconsin. And now she fittingly serves for match points. Wisconsin hasn't won inside Maturi Pavilion since 2014. It's a pretty good team, led by four-time all, four All-American Warren Carlini. And Recky misses it long. Number 13 in the service error column for Wisconsin. And Minnesota has made this fourth set very, very compelling. Certainly much more so than it was for the majority of this fourth set with Wisconsin in command. Danielle Hartz. It's a one-point set. Point you. Position. Bailey McMenamin, Tamara Delonga, especially recently, have filled in admirably, and you've still got some big-time power up front. Here's CeCe McGraw. Hilly to Danielle Hart. Adana Rollins. Haggerty saved it. And now Clark has to get it over. From the Raptors, it falls to McGraw. Pittman in the middle, we are tied at 24. Loberg blocked by Samity. Give that a block solo. Well, that was just pretty unreal. I mean, she was one on one, and then she just kind of put that ball right back into the blocker's hands. And she had some spacing then, too, but just chose not to. Can you believe this? An 8 1 run for Minnesota on death's door in this match, and now on the verge of forcing a fifth set. Lethal serve. Loberg. Big time swing for Grace Loberg as Wisconsin has life. So you want to win the Big Ten, huh? This is what you got to do. Come through fire. Wisconsin and Minnesota. An instant classic at Maturi. Pittman with a delicate touch, and that gets the job done. Nice change up there by Pittman. And we've seen her hit the ball really hard, and she just takes a lot off by tipping it over. And that's a tough ball to defend for the off blockers, or even if the blocker were to come down and, and turn and try to play it up. Set point number two. Steph Sanity serving. She's got just five kills in the match for Minnesota. Four straight matches with less than 10 kills for Samity, but she. Makes an impact on the game in other ways. Loberg off 
off the block. Right now, the crowd is howling inside Maturi. They thought there was a double hit there that went uncalled. You've got fans around the arena holding up the number two. Before the double contact can be called, it's not the spin of the ball. It's the, you know, the R1 has to see that there's actually two contacts on the ball. Rollins slams it home either way. What is this crowd no volleyball or what? We're tied again. Not even CeCe McCraw could save that one off the block. Well, Minnesota's out of substitutions right now. You have McMiniman, who's going to be playing across the front row, and you have Kill Kelly playing across the front row. And I'm not sure if Wisconsin has picked it up on that they have, you know, some liabilities on the defensive side for Minnesota. But this is going to be a scramble to finish this set out for Minnesota. Huge advantage for Wisconsin with McMenamin in the front row along with Kill Kelly. And Haggerty gets the job done, absolutely exploiting that mismatch. Kill Kelly is 5'9", number six, and Nick Meneman is 5'9", as well, number 13. An unfortunate scenario for Minnesota to be stuck in now as they have played their tails off in this fourth set, and Wisconsin is serving for the match again. Wisconsin just needs to stay in system, you would think. And they do, and that gets the job done. It takes 30 points in the fourth set, 29 in the fourth for Wisconsin.